Today, I'm gonna show you how to make a human figure out of wire. This is one of my favorite 3D lessons for my sculpture classes because you learn about the human body, focusing on accurate human proportion, but you can also really explore movement and expression with your human figure. The human body can show so much emotion in art and it's such a great subject matter because there's humans everywhere. You will need sculpting wire and I will put the aluminum wire that I'm using in the description box. A pair of pliers comes in handy, but I'll be doing my, most of this video without. And you will also need something like a block of wood to create a stable base for your sculpture at the end. If you love learning about art, hit that subscribe button so you never miss an art tutorial. To start, get one long piece of your aluminum sculpture wire. I didn't measure, I just kind of cut like, I don't know, maybe six feet, five feet. Then you're gonna find not the center, but you're gonna find um, part almost towards the end, but not quite, and loop with the, your free end all the way around itself until you've made a loop, an oval, or something that looks like a lollipop or a balloon. You can see I have a really long piece underneath it, and then I do have almost like a scarf sticking out. I have a shorter end. Take that shorter end and pull it back down to create a triangular shape. The first loop is your head. This is going to be your torso, your shoulders into your waist. Take your piece of end that's not, so the shorter end, and then loop that around itself at least two times. If you just do it once, it won't really hold its form. So I like to do two neat loops to start. Now we have our head with the neck. Now we have our shoulders to our waist, and now it's time for the creepiest part, the pelvic girdle, or as I like to call it in school, the Batman bikini. This is the same size as your head, but instead of an oval, it's more of a triangular shape um, with the point at the bottom or away from the head. So I'm trying to make it about the same size. You can see that the sculpture wire is trying to fight me a little bit, and I'm kind of looping around that shorter end into the longer end. Um, and you can see now I'm trying to tape my wire and make it not round, but make it more triangular, but about the same size as the head. Okay, now we have the head, the torso, the pelvic girdle, and then we're gonna go down into the legs. My goal is proportion or size relationships. And so if you're doing the human body accurately, it's about eight human heads high, depending on the size of your head. So if from my head to my Batman bikini is the halfway point. So at this point, grab something that you can measure with and you're going to just recreate your legs the same length as the head, torso, and pelvis. So what I do is just kind of measure, taking my ruler, and then I'm gonna make a loop at the very bottom to create my foot. So first I'm just focusing on proportion, but I want my human figure to be showing motion and movement, and so I want the ability for it to be able to stand. So you can see I made a loop just like I did with my head, loop around the ankle a couple of times so that it's nice and stable, and then you're gonna go back up, stop at the halfway point, and this will be the knee. I always loop at least twice, making sure that it has a nice stable um, loop because if you don't kind of knot each section and give each section a stopping point, it, the wire is going to slide around and you're not going to have well-defined um, bone structure or muscle mass. So I have my foot, knee, or the knee is going to be your halfway point, and then I'm going to go all the way back into the Batman bikini and I'm going to loop it around the side and this will be the top part of your leg, so your hamstring, your quad, into your upper thigh um, and your rear end. So I'm gonna loop that around on the right hand side so that it doesn't like slide around um, and there's a nice defined leg. Um, this is kind of the skeleton part of this. We will go back and give it a little more muscle mass. Right now the focus is proportion, clean wrapping, and making sure each part of the body you loop at least twice so it has nice um, a nice structure and form to it. You can see it's giving me a hard time. Um, and like I said at the beginning of the vi video, I am not using pliers just because I like my videos to be as uncomplicated as possible with limited materials. If you have pliers, you might be able to have a neater, um, like a neater wrap and you might have a little bit of an easier time with your wire. Before you move on to the next body part, stop and look at it. Check your wraps kind of move the wire around to get the shape you want. Things can get real complicated real fast, so always stop, assess yourself, check your loops, check your body parts to make sure everything is right in the same place. 
Now it's easy because I've already measured. I'm gonna take the rest of my wire and go down and stop where the foot is, and I'm gonna repeat all these same steps. I'm looping again, trying to make it about the same size. Make sure to stand your sculpture up to make sure that the feet or the legs aren't uh, lopsided, but they're about or the same length. Then you're gonna make your foot. Remember, you're gonna wrap at least twice, adjust your wire as needed, and then you'll go back up the leg, into the knee, into the upper body again. So it's very simple, clean lines at first, making sure, you'll hear me say this a lot, wrap two times at each transitional body part, like ankle, knee, and hip. Your wire does try to fight you a little bit, so that's why I like to work with, you know, not huge long pieces of wire at a time because it will knock things off your desk. If you're sitting next to someone, be careful. You might poke them in the eye. Be aware of the end of your wire because it definitely has a mind of its own. So here I am kind of looping it around in the Batman bikini area, and you'll notice there's gonna be a few areas that you do a lot of wrapping, the neck, um, and the waist, you'll kind of have some like stopping and starting points. So make sure you're wrapping there very neatly so it doesn't look too heavy or too um, messy in those areas. Like I said before, check your work. Make sure that your legs look like they belong to the same human so that they have similar mass, they have similar lengths, um, and that your feet do work. That's gonna be important once it's time to get your sculpture standing on a base. Okay, I have the skeleton or the outline of my legs. Now it's time to add more wire and attach it for our arms. Because when I finished my legs, I knew I didn't have enough to go into my arms. I just looped it several times around the waist to kind of finish off that wire. And because I have so much happening in the waist, I'm gonna loop just like I did the first time um, around the neck with a small amount. Um, and I probably did too much on the end there, but I really want this part to be secure and not have like a loose end. So I'm wrapping that around the neck into the first shoulder. And again, maybe that was a little too much wire, but I'm gonna make it work. Okay, now that I have my sculpture by its neck, it's time to do the arms. So the proportion of arms, I wanna make sure it doesn't look like the arm is coming straight out of my neck. So the top part of my triangle, the two longer sides, I'm gonna do a wrap so that I can go down and do my right arm. This is a little tricky because I have so much wire, so I have to kind of loop it through. And again, remember, you're gonna wrap two times every time you start a new body part or you go to a halfway point like a knee, an elbow, an ankle, that sort of thing. Okay, so I have my wire neatly attached. And then looking at human proportion, the average human arm goes to mid thigh. Now we're making kind of like a textbook human. Of course, everyone is different and there's all different types of body types out there, but I'm gonna kind of go by the guide that you would find like in a health science book. So just like I did with the hand, I'm doing a very small loop um, or for the hand, just like I did with the foot. Um, attached to just that one single piece of wire. Make sure to stop, check to make sure that your wire is the right length and it's not a hot mess. And then I'm gonna travel back up the arm to the elbow. Just like before, I'm going to do two really good loops to make sure that my elbow stays in place, checking to make sure it looks right, it's not a tangled mess. And then I'm gonna go back into the torso to finish off my hand into the shoulder. This is an important connection because I don't wanna wrap it around the neck because that will bring the arm to the neck which isn't um, proportionately accurate so you see how I am attaching it slightly lower than the top shoulder just like imagine this is the bottom of your armpit it is a little bit tricky to go through the torso and loop depending on how long your wire is mine's still pretty long because I had just reattached and then you can see it kind of gives this like balloon arm and I need to play around and make sure as it's the wires fighting me that it's the arm doesn't look like like a flappy wing, um, but it's also, also not too skinny or like sticking directly into the neck. So it takes a little bit of elbow grease. It's not perfect, but it's good enough. Um, and I'm gonna repeat the same steps on the other side. Going down to mid thigh, looping twice to create my hand, going to the halfway point, looks good. And then it's time for the elbow, taking my extra wire, looping it around twice, and then I'm going to, and this is the end of the wire, so it's starting to not want to cooperate. And then I'm gonna do the same thing, create a thicker arm, because this is where the biggest part of your arm is, at the shoulder where it connects. This is a little tricky. This is where pliers would come in handy, because you could kind of loop in there. But again, I'm doing this public school style. What if you don't have enough pliers for all your students? I'm just showing that you can do it without them if you have to. So this hand's a little bit squished. I kind of lost my elbow a little bit. Um, I'm gonna kind of 
fidget with it, try and fix it, lose my cool. And here's my advice. Anytime your wire is really just driving you crazy, take a deep breath. If possible, take a minute away from it. Um, if that's not possible, move on to another part of the sculpture, knowing that you can always go back and adjust the wire as you go. I'm gonna fight with my wire a little bit more before I move on to the next step. So we're going to check our proportions because we're at the end of the skeleton phase. I'm just making sure that the wire didn't sink back in on itself, that my forms are really nice and intentional. Um, checking the legs, making sure, there we go, we've been doing our squats over here, making sure that all the connections are there. Yes, the left hand bothers me, the left arm I should say, but I know the next step is adding more wire to create muscle mass. Take another piece of wire and wrap it around one of your base points, either the neck or the torso. I'm doing the torso because I'm going to, or around the waist, so I can build up the torso from there. Keep in mind, every person who does this and every time you do it, you're gonna end your wire at different places. So if you had extra wire, you would skip this step and just work with the wire that you had until you run out. Now that I have my sculpture by the waist, I'm gonna loop it up to create a nice proud chest, loop it around the neck to make sure it's nice and secure, and I have my nice form, which means three-dimensional shape. It's not flat. Instead of looking like a flat skeleton, it's gonna to start to look more three-dimensional and more sculptural. I'm gonna go back around the other side to create my nice back, and I'm gonna loop that around the waist to give it a good stopping point. Okay, let me bring it to where you can see it. Um, and this is where you're gonna really notice if you overwrap the neck or you overwrap the waist, it starts to look clunky or unfinished. And you can kind of pull the wire to give it that form. One of the most noticeable areas of your sculpture will be the head. So you want to double over crossing your wire at an opposite angle that you started with. That is going to make your head look more three dimensional. So this is very difficult. I'm not going to loop yet. I'm going to go back down and wrap it around the neck to give it kind of that first loop. It might not look um, right immediately it might look kind of awkward so kind of like measure get your wire where you want it and then you can once it's stable kind of pull twist and get it the right form that you would like it so i'm wrapping again pulling all the way through and it's making this kind of kink in the wire that's just wire it's not the nicest material it's scabby it has a mind of its own and i'm just kind of looping around again pulling as i go to make sure i don't have like a smashed head or a peanut head but i have a nice kind of like oval skull like shape i don't want to overwrap the head it's not going to be solid just a few loops to give it the illusion of mass instead of just like one little circle it's not really connected i'm not loving it yet but again i know that this is a work in progress so i'm just going to kind of get my wire the way i want it and then have my end point bringing it back down through the torso and wrap it around the waist so we can give some muscle mass to our lower body Remember your stopping points will always be your transitional parts of the body. So your neck, your waist, your elbow, your knee, your wrist, your ankle. So those are gonna be the areas that you wrap around to create um, three-dimensional shape or form and to make sure that you still have your correct proportion. So for the thigh, you're just gonna go from the waist and then you're gonna wrap it around the knee and then you'll go back down to the ankle wrap it around there and that will create a really nice upper thigh um, and give your sculpture more of a muscular look you can see it looks like my sculpture has been working out looping carefully and neatly around the knee and then going back into the waist so that's the thing with wire is you're using long pieces that you're wrapping into itself so it's really stable you're going to repeat the same steps on the other side loop around the waist create a thicker thigh loop around the knee Go down to the ankle and loop a couple times neatly. You want to make sure it's tight. Loop back around the knee, and then you're going to head on back to the waist. So he's already looking much more muscular and much more defined. Now, depending on your taste, you could do this more than once. Um, I'm a public school teacher and wire is expensive, so I'm going to kind of limit how much wire I use. And again, the whole point isn't to cover the whole thing. It's not gonna be 100% wire. You will be able to see through the sculpture and the wire creates this really nice movement in your sculpture. I'm gonna do the same exact technique to the arms. So I went to my waist, to my neck, from my neck to my elbow, elbow to wrist, nice and tw twisted, and then going back again to my neck. Okay, nice and thick. 
I'm out of wire here. And remember, you can add wire to your sculpture at any point. So I'm gonna go ahead and get some more wire and I'm gonna attach it so I can finish off this sculpture by doing my right arm. So I'm kind of looping through, attaching it at the shoulder almost, because I don't want the neck to look like I'm like strangling my sculpture. I don't want it to be too emphasized, so you can see me kind of like backtrack here. It's totally up to you where to add your wire. Don't add it somewhere random. It needs to be one of those points that we talked about. And I think I'm gonna have success here trying to wrap it in the shoulder area where I attach my arm going into my midway point, which is the elbow, and I'm gonna twist that all the way so that I can move on with just the long piece, if that makes sense. Then I'm gonna continue with that nice long edge, wrap it around the wrist, and because I knew I was finishing with this sculpture, I didn't cut as long of a piece as I had before. Now I have this extra piece, so I'm gonna go around the neck again, loop one more time around the head to give it that nice mass. And then I'm gonna twist it, and this is the hard part when you have to finish the wire. Make sure you have a nice loop and a nice stopping point. Now your sculpture has accurate human proportions and it has mass or form, so lay it out like Leonardo da Vinci's Vitruvian Man with perfect proportion and double check that your muscle mass is the where, where you want it to be. There's no awkward like edges and that it's three-dimensional. Now, if you have pliers, you can use the pliers to kind of pull and twist, which can absolutely be done with just your hands as I've demonstrated, but this might help if you're like really trying to get some of your wire to listen to you to kind of clamp in and make a fine point or to kind of pull your sculpture to make it not look flat. Now at this point, it's time to start thinking about movement and expression. I have done this sculpture a lot throughout the years and I'm always so impressed with how creative my students can be forming their sculpture to show movement or to express how it feels to be a human. So you can think about you know, what movement you want your sculpture to do or think of a big idea like how would a person look if they were confident or how would a person, um, how could you use the human body to show anguish? And you could pick any theme that you would like to really dig deeper into how the human body can show expression and show movement. So play around with those ideas. Think about what you want your sculpture to be. And now that you have a sculpture that has mass, has form, and has accurate proportions, play around with moving those body parts. Keep in mind the elbow is the bending point of the arm. So if it bends down at the wrist, like in between the wrist and elbow, something's wrong. Same thing with the leg. If your knee is like moving the wrong way, it's gonna look like your sculpture was in a terrible accident. So think about the human body. Maybe look at your own body. Maybe look at one of those drawing mannequins and make sure whatever position you put it in, the human body could actually look that way. So kind of play around. Wire is super easy to mold, super easy to kind of figure out and move and shift. Once you're happy with your expression and your movement, it's time to attach your sculpture to a base. I prefer to use wooden bases because they um, balance the sculpture very well. Anything lighter and it might topple over. This is a nice piece of wood I stole from my husband's wood shop and my students will be using blocks of wood that they probably paint black. Um, I prefer to use a staple gun. I don't have one presently, so what I'm doing is attaching a small piece of wire to the knee. My balance is on one foot, which is a little bit tricky, but luckily wire is so thin that it should hold. So I attached to my knee and wrapped around my ankle. If I just wrap the extra wire to my ankle, it might fall over. And then I'm just gonna simply wrap the wire a couple times around the base. This is not my favorite way to do this, but again, I did not have um, a nail gun. You can see that the wire makes the base a little unsteady because of the way it's wrapped unevenly on the bottom. It serves its purpose, and you can make like a spiral. You can make it look really nice. This is a basic way to do it. Again, I prefer using one of those heavy-duty heavy staple guns. Um, regular like office staples won't work, or at least they haven't worked in my uh, my situation and you can do like a spiral and just have the base be a wire form that you create yourself. I prefer a block of wood that's painted, stapled down, and if the staples look too much, I will just paint the staples black. So here's my sculpture 360 view. I'm rotating it while holding my phone, so if it looks a little crazy, forgive my camera work. You can see it's balanced, it has proportion, it shows expression, and it's attached to a base. Thank you for sticking around and making art with me and if you're interested in more sculpting tutorials check these out also if you're interested in what my students are currently doing in my classroom find me on instagram at that art underscore machado